cybercrime is set to cost the world $10.5 trillion by 2025. This is larger than the entire GDP of Germany, France, and the UK. Combined in 2021, but what if I told you that the world's most dangerous virus is completely legal and could be running on your phone right now without a trace introducing Pegasus, the world's most dangerous computer virus? What makes it so hazardous is that the virus can take over your device and cause problems even if you don't do anything wrong, like accidentally clicking a link or downloading something. What is Pegasus? What does the name Pegasus mean? First and foremost, Greek mythology is the origin of this word. In mythology, a winged white horse. The name of it was Pegasus. However, in the present day, Pegasus is a kind of spyware. Malicious software viruses known as spyware sneak onto your computer or mobile device. In addition to sharing your data with others, your camera is accessible to them. The camera on your phone or other data, such as your WhatsApp conversations or images, could be captured by them. They can take everything and sell it to someone else. What these spyware programs essentially do is snoop on you. Pegasus is like a stealthy spy that can secretly watch everything you do with or near your smartphone without you even knowing it. It's a malicious program, kind of like a hidden virus, often sneaking into your device through online means. Once it's in, Pegasus can do a lot of scary things. It gives unauthorized access to hackers who can record your phone calls, track your location, use your phone camera to take pictures or videos, and even read your text messages. This stolen information is then sent back to the person who planted the malware. It can be a major threat to your privacy and security. So it's important to be aware and take steps to protect your device from such potential dangers. It was first spotted in 2016 when a human rights activist named Ahmed Mansour received a suspicious message on his iPhone. Mansour shared the message with the Citizen Lab at the University of Toronto, who figured out what this malware could do. Back then, Pegasus took advantage of three unknown security flaws in phone apps, letting it sneak into phones without users knowing. This sneaky malware has been around since at least 2013, staying hidden for years. It became widely known when it was linked to significant events, like the tragic killing of journalist Jamal Khashoggi in the Saudi Arabian consulate in Abu Dhabi. So even though it took a while to discover Pegasus, its impact has been quite high profile. For example, resulted in a lawsuit against the makers of Pegasus by friends of Kasogi who alleged it was used by the Saudi government to spy on them in late 2021. Pegasus was discovered on Jamal Kasogi's wife's phone, placed there by a government agency, potentially making Kasogi's target before his tragic death in 2018. This connection is explored in a frontline documentary produced by PBS, where many first learned about Pegasus. In 2018, Pegasus was also used to hack Amazon boss Jeff Bezos. The Bezos hack is likely linked to WhatsApp messages with Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman, whom Bezos' Washington Post had criticized. The hackers had access to Bezos' phone for months, compromising both his personal and business privacy. The aftermath of the hack notably led to the end of Bezos' marriage, as leaked texts publicly revealed his affair with reporter Lauren Sanchez. The connection between these events sheds light on the far-reaching consequences of Pegasus and its impact on individuals' lives. Pegasus stands out as an extremely risky form of spying because it's specifically sold to governments, often fetching millions of dollars, and it's created by the Israeli NSO Group. Officially, it's marketed for tracking and tracing terrorists and their activities. But in reality, it's suspected to be used for more covert purposes. Since its introduction, Pegasus has evolved through several versions, each more powerful and capable than the last. In its latest form, if this malware gets installed on your device, practically everything you do with or near your smartphone becomes accessible to the user. It's a significant privacy concern with potential far-reaching consequences. Pegasus works by taking advantage of security bugs, which are programming errors related to security in software packages and operating systems. Specifically, Pegasus targets what's known as zero-day vulnerabilities.
These are issues recognized by top security specialists but not yet known by the software creators. These vulnerabilities, present in various operating systems, allow Pegasus to exploit the system, gaining administrative rights to a smartphone or other devices. The malware usually arrives on a device through a disguised link, although there are more subtle methods as well. At one point, there was a security flaw where simply making a FaceTime call on an iPhone could allow Pegasus to install itself. Fortunately, that security glitch has been fixed now. Constantly evolving, new vulnerabilities are always being discovered. When a government decides to use a program like Pegasus, preventing it becomes nearly impossible. Some security experts even recommend extreme measures like discarding your smartphone or not carrying one at all. For more practical solutions, experts suggest removing certain functionalities, like the camera during crucial times to ensure privacy. Another approach is to keep your smartphone regularly updated, which helps reduce the security gaps that Pegasus exploits as companies become aware of them. It's essential to remember that Pegasus often targets vulnerabilities not yet known to the program makers. In its latest versions, Pegasus operates extensively, using your phone simultaneously and anonymously collecting large amounts of data, which it sends back to the person who planted the malware. This should be a concern because it can seriously compromise your privacy. The biggest risk of Pegasus affecting you is if you do something your government disapproves of. Although Pegasus is officially meant for tracking terrorists, it's likely been used worldwide for various purposes, such as monitoring protesters or gathering information on political opponents. Its use is secretive and challenging to protest if discovered. In practice, it's difficult to know exactly how governments use this software. What is clear, however, is that it has targeted journalists and activists. In 2021, the nonprofit Forbidden Stories exposed the widespread misuse of Pegasus, even by relatively modern states like Hungary and Poland. Another investigation revealed that 10 other countries, including India, Mexico, and Morocco, have also abused this malware. It highlights the global reach and potential misuse of this powerful tool. Amnesty International's research uncovered 50,000 specific targets, including 180 journalists from 20 countries, working with major outlets like CNN Al Jazeera, The Financial Times, and The Wall Street Journal. This is likely just the beginning, as it would be naive to think the Amnesty report captured everything. While the average person might feel their data isn't as valuable as that of journalists and politicians, it's important to recognize that data is used in various ways, from advertising to behavior monitoring. Everyone's data holds some value. Even though there's a clear commercial gain in tracking the average person on the street, the true extent of Pegasus's widespread use remains uncertain, as its secretive nature makes it challenging to determine, even for its creators. It is though thought to still be in the hands of governments alone, which is somewhat reassuring when you think how its wider use could be abused one of the best efforts to work out. Just how common the malware it was by the Pegasus Project, which saw major media organizations from around the world investigate the malware over 80 journalists from publications, including The Wall Street, the Guardian and Lamont spent months investigating Amnesty International's list of 50,000 phone numbers, aiming to confirm its accuracy. They successfully linked many of these numbers to the Pegasus spyware, despite the makers of Pegasus denying any connection. Pegasus's creators insisted that the investigation was trying to build something with a lack of information, claiming there was something fundamentally wrong with it. They maintained that the list had nothing to do with them, even though Pegasus had been abused. The NSO Group consistently defends its software, asserting that they provide authorized governments with technology to combat terror and crime. Your feelings about Pegasus may depend on your trust in various national governments. However, skeptics, including experts, point out that in addition to the NSO Group, app producers also bear a degree of responsibility in this matter. Tech companies play a role in this too, as they provide apps with security vulnerabilities to numerous mobile devices. Experts argue that the rewards offered by tech companies for finding these vulnerabilities are not enough when compared to the black market value of the same information. 
For instance, Apple caps its bug bounty at $200,000, while the black market value for some bugs could be in the millions. As Pegasus has evolved, the amount of information it can access has also grown, now even including access to Wi-Fi passwords through a targeted device. Android phones have faced a similar threat known as Chrysar, named after Pegasus's brother in Greek mythology. The list of countries using or deploying this software continues to grow. The FBI is believed to utilize the software in the U.S., having been discovered on the phones of State Department employees. At least two EU officials have also been targeted. Israel's decision not to sell the software to Ukraine to aid in defense against Russia is seen by many as a sign of Israeli support for Russian leader Vladimir Putin. You might be wondering about the legality of such software. It's legal in most places when used with permission. The software does have genuine practical applications, but its usage is subject to permissions and authorization. Pegasus could be on a government official's phone, seemingly normal, while discreetly recording their environment or meetings. For example, it enables a smartphone to be used for protective or information gathering purposes, despite many illegal uses of the malware. Pegasus itself is not illegal in principle. The silver lining in this story is that Amnesty International has developed a tool to detect Pegasus. You can find a detailed explanation on the Amnesty International website, and it's worth considering for anyone with serious concerns. The tool copies the entire contents of a phone onto a computer and then scans for signs of Pegasus. While some level of computing knowledge is helpful, it's not necessary. In the end, Pegasus serves as a chilling reminder that our private information may not be as private as we would like to believe.